Today, Sander Pichai is a billionaire and the CEO of Google and Alphabet, but that was not always the case. His success story is actually incredible. He was born in a humble middle-class family and was raised in a two-bedroom house without many luxuries. We lived in a kind of modest house, shared with tenants, and we would sleep on the living room floor. Other houses had refrigerators, and then we finally got one. It was a big deal. The family didn't have a telephone until Sander was 12. He then realized that he can remember every number he ever dialed. This device sparked his love for technology. During his childhood, his family didn't own a TV or a car, and his father, who was an electrical engineer, had to save money for three years to buy the family a new scooter so they could easily travel. I grew up without much access to technology. We didn't get our first telephone till I was 12. I didn't have regular access to a computer till I came to America for graduate school. On the television, when we finally got one, only had one channel. But his parents made sure their children had the best education the family could afford. My dad and mom did what a lot of parents did at the time. They sacrificed a lot of their life and used a lot of their disposable income to make sure their children were educated. So Sander Pichai studied engineering at the Indian Institute of Technology. He was one of the brightest students, which got him a scholarship at Stanford. But getting there was not easy. My father spent the equivalent of a year's salary on my plane ticket to the US, so I could attend Stanford. It was my first time ever on a plane. America was expensive, a phone call back home was more than $2 a minute, and a backpack cost the same as my dad's monthly salary in India. The only thing that got me from here to there, other than luck, was a deep passion for technology and an open mind. So when 20-year-old Sander arrived in the US decades ago, he never dreamed that he would become a success story that will motivate and inspire millions of people around the world, that anything is possible. He joined Google in 2004 and went on to become the CEO of the company in 2015. But his success didn't stop there. Just four years later, he was also named CEO of Google's parent company, Alphabet. And today, his net worth is over billion dollars. So Sander Pichai went from being a humble shy boy from a middle-class family who slept on the floor to a billionaire and the CEO of Google and Alphabet, one of the most powerful companies in the world. But what's interesting is that, even though he became very successful, he is known to be very humble and friendly with everybody, which makes him one of the most respected and liked leaders. And even though he's not a workaholic, his work ethic is impeccable. So if you're struggling right now and you feel lost and scared, Sandar has an advice that can change your life. You want to aim high enough you fail a few times. That's a natural part of a process. Even if you fail, you end up doing something great in the process. Setbacks actually don't matter. Starting a company and even having failed, you can wear it as a badge of honor. If you don't fail sometimes, you're not being ambitious enough. At some point in your life, you need to work with people where you feel a bit insecure, because that means you're working with people who are better than you and who are pushing you. If you actually feel very secure in what you do, means you're doing something comfortable and you're not pushing yourself. So let yourself feel insecure. It will help you grow as an individual. A lot of times when I was younger, people used to say, this person didn't get into this college or something. But life is so different from that. And so I think it's important to keep your hopes, keep your dreams and try to follow them. And I think most of how life plays out is up to you and not up to what happens outside of you. You will make the world better in your own way, even if you don't know exactly how. The important thing is to be open-minded so you can find what you love. 
So take the time to find the thing that excites you more than anything else in the world, not the thing your parents want you to do, or the thing that all your friends are doing, or what society expects of you. I'd encourage people to try different things, take some risks, follow their passion a little bit more, and enjoy what you're doing. So I think if you follow your heart and do what you like, you will always do much better. It doesn't matter what your educational qualification is. It's worthwhile taking risks on trying to do something you're really excited by. And at first attempt, if you don't do it, you can try again. And things tend to work out in the long run. Life is beautiful and terrifying at the same time. Sometimes it brings us so high, we feel like we can touch the sky and do anything. Other times it brings us so low and smacks us on the ground as a reminder to be humble. Life isn't perfect and we shouldn't expect everything to be perfect in order for us to be happy. There's no such thing as perfection. A person who is happy is not because everything is right in his life. He is happy because his attitude towards everything in his life is right. Life is really just too short to not be happy, to not be fulfilled. Take the responsibility of your life and remember that today you can make a difference by changing your mindset. Stop being so scared of failure and go fail thousand times. You need to embrace failure as a part of life. Stop running away from it and learn from it. You only regret the things you don't do. Being unafraid of making mistakes makes everything easy for me. Not worrying about what people think frees you to do things, and doing things allows you to win or learn from your loss, which means you win either way. You are better off being wrong 10 times and being right 3 than you are if you try only 3 times and always get it right. There's no such thing as perfect. Chasing perfect is the shortest road to not achieving it. You just have to make the choice to actually do it. I'm so tired of excuses. Why not try something new? Be optimistic, exhibit patience, shut your mouth and execute. What you need to do is make one person happy. You. And remember, success is what it means to you. The goal is not to be Sundar Pichai, the goal is to be happy. So, what's your story?